generation of the Tilson family. We build homes on your land all over Texas. Uh, we are doing another one of our customization tour videos today. We want to share with you guys uh, some changes that we've made. We are joined again for the second time on the show by Darla Skillman out of our Weatherford location. Darla, say hello. Hello, everyone. And of course, as always, we have Don Dantzler, our Director of Marketing, moderating, posting things to the uh, chat. So say hello, Don. Hi, everybody. So Don is, uh, of course, going to be answering your questions, prompting uh, Darla and, and me on the questions as well. So please, please, please post your questions in the chat. We'll answer them live uh, as we get around to them. So very excited today. Take a look at a, um, a plan, a um, little bit unique in that it used to be called a different plan in, in our portfolio. We did some updating to it and renamed it. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But before we do that, we do want to, even though Darla's been on before, we want to at least spend a little time talking to Darla. Darla, give us a little about your story with Tilson. I know you're coming up on a seven-year anniversary. Is that right? Yes, in just a few days. About a week. Yeah, so anyway, tell us a little bit about your journey and what brought you to Tilson, and because yours is unique. It is a little bit different than most. Um, my husband, John, and I built a home with Tilson in 2010, and uh we had been in the house a few months and the area we were in experienced some wildfires. And so we got to rebuild a second home with Tilson, which was really kind of neat. We learned a lot the first time around, learned even more the second time around. And through both those experiences, I really got to learn about Tilson and the people in the company. And for me, it was a place that I kind of went, I want to work there someday. And so I that someday came about two years later. And now I've been here almost shy one week of seven years. Yeah, it's a seven years. So, yeah. well, very cool. And um, we're so glad you're here. So not just here today, but here at Tilson. So <laughs> we're able to for our customers, uh, the sacrifice that you and John uh, have made for us has really been cool. So we're excited. Um, so today we're looking at so last week we we talked about reducing a home down, making it one of our plans, taking it down, make it smaller. Um, this week we thought we'd do something a little different and take a plan and supersize it, make it a little larger. And in fact, in this case, a lot larger. Yes. So so tell us a little bit about. I know they started with the plan was called the Jacksonville, which um, we've taken and and uh, kind of overhauled and reintroduced as the Canyon which we may or may not be building as a model someday. So a little yeah. teaser out there might be happening. But anyway, you guys post your questions to the chat. Howdy, Luann, we're so glad you're here. Cynthia, Christy, so great, so grateful that you're joining us. Tell us a little about the family, Darla, what kind of brought them in? What, where were they living before? Where are they moving to? What what made them want to change? Okay, well, they're, they're here local outside the Fort Worth Metroplex. Um, mm -hmm. Wonderful family. Um, they have two children. Um, they had their property. They actually had a mobile home on the property. Uh, they bought it a few years before, and it was now time to build their forever home. And this is truly their forever home. So they wanted to make everything be exactly what they wanted. So we did a lot of customizing to do that. So um, started with the, the plan itself and then just made the modifications we needed to. Um, the exterior, everybody's seeing is the board and bat and then they wanted some stone at the bottom. So we, we added that, um, but we added fourth bedroom option and added a hobby room and added a three car garage. And all right. So, sure. so, so this was the stock plan here, sort of, kind of what the what, if they were so going to go on TilsonHomes.com and, and look for the canyon. Actually, you can just go to a, a search engine, Google, and type in Tilson Homes Canyon, and uh, it will bring up uh, a link directly to it. So this is kind of how it starts out, right? So it's got a nice front and back porch already um, on the home, nice country feel, um, pretty good sized kitchen. But yeah, you're right. It's it's three bedroom. Two and a half bath with a study that, that, that could be a fourth bedroom and mm -hmm. nice look at it's definitely designed for country living, right? I mean, you've got the utility room and pattern room off of that one side. There's no excuse. People can bring muddy boots in. They, they can get in over there and and uh, not trapeze across the house and make mama mad. Um, maybe that was just my house growing up, but <laughs> it was a problem. It was a problem. So 
So tell us a little bit about what they saw in this plan at first, and then you said, okay, now we want to make some make some changes. So what all did we do here? Take us through the changes. Okay, so um, what they really loved was the open concept of it, being able to you know add the fireplace. Um, that was something they really wanted. The cathedral ceiling that was in it, that was uh, you know something that was, it just made it feel larger, more open. Um, we added, like I said, the three car garage. Um, so he would have room for the toys as well. Um, and then the way with the craft room added on, when we did that option, um, it created a bigger space for that study uh, to give the offsets on the front of the house and the keeping the gabling the way they wanted it. Um, so that was, you know, another piece of it. We added the fourth bedroom on the other side of the house. <laughs> so, and then uh, created a large walk-in closet for bedroom three. Um, the master bath, the layout of it, um, there was some unique features that they wanted in there. So worked with them on those things. Um, kind of straightening up the kitchen island instead of the curved island that was in there, did more of a straight on it. So all in all, they got access in through the utility, through the garage, which was a biggie, and then having the powder bath there so they could access it and not have to walk through the house to get to the restroom. The craft room where the kids spend a lot of time, it gives them restroom close to the, the craft room. Sure. Um, the um, study, while well, it's labeled study, I think they currently really kind of use it with some exercise equipment and stuff. Yeah, like I thought we're going to see that here in just a second. I did yeah. want to ask uh, a couple questions or maybe kind of even point something out to folks. Uh, you mentioned the offset, and I want to be sure that's not lost on people. So, you know, when, when, when someone wants to come in and just start making a plan bigger, Darla, you, you know, you have to take into consideration – how that's going to change the way the elevation of the home or the, the, the house looks from the exterior. So uh, walk us through again, why the study has to stick out past this porch. And maybe so, we can see it later on the front, but yeah, to, to keep the structural continuity and, and, and integrity and everything there, the study needed to extend beyond the front porch to keep the double gable that is on the plan, the, Stop yeah, planning. so we'll see that when we go to the front right. elevation. Um, and then also this plan was, in fact, reversed. I think it's being cut off on on, um, on the live stream, but it, we did reverse the plan. So uh, tell me what the customer, what, what was going on with that, why they need to flip the plan around, and how hard was that to do? Well, it's not hard at all. It's it's checking a box on our <laughs> <phones>. <laughs> <laughs> so not not hard, not difficult. Drafting may have a different opinion of that, but for us, it's really not. Um, their situation was is where the driveway came in, where the existing mobile was. They still wanted to use the same drive they had rather than put in a new driveway. So in reversing the plan, it put the garage on the correct side where the drive was existing. And so that was that was part of reversing that plan. Okay. Yeah. So going back, any folks that joined us uh, later, the, these folks had, a, they were living on the property or they had, a, they, live not, they had a, a mobile home on the property. So there was already a driveway there, obviously already power there, already uh, probably a septic system of some sort there. Um, and, and so all that stuff was in place and they, you know, that's why we flipped the house around, which is, is no problem. Like, like Darla said, we just check a box and then now, yeah, our design drafting team has has a lot of AutoCAD work ahead of them, but but we can do that on every plan. In fact, with most of our plans online, including the Canyon, uh, you can actually do that uh, in our interactive uh, floor plan. So, all right. Uh, anything else about, oh, tell me about the porch. We did make the porch. Uh, yeah, the, the, the extended covered porch on the rear. Uh, that, that was a big thing as well. They have a beautiful view out the back of the property um, because the property actually kind of sets up on a hill. And so, and being, you know, family with kids, they're outside a lot. So that was something they really wanted to have was make sure they had that large rear covered porch so they could really enjoy it. And then they put a door, looks like going out the master, to yes. have some kind of private access, that's nice. Yes. 
Okay, so we went all in. We were at 2,200 and something feet to start with, 2,000, yeah. somewhere in there. And now we're at 20, almost 3,000 square feet of living area. Yes. So that's that's quite a change. That's awesome. Yeah. So now we're not, we're three bedrooms. It was three bedrooms and a flex and a two and a two and a half bath. Now we are four bedrooms and a study and a craft room. And um, yeah, we got a big house here. So yes. how did it turn out? What did they do? It's gorgeous. I mean, it just, the the stone wane that they put across the, the bottom, um, of course we added the cedar accents to match and they stained them, you know, to match the porch post. Um, they came in later and actually did the, the guttering as an after. Okay, yeah. yeah. That uh, something that our customers can do. Um, but no, it just, it, it, you drive up and it's just, it's incredible to see because it's, it's really large. It just changed the landscape quite a bit. So there is still a work in progress for them. Um, they closed earlier um, this year or end of last year, right? Oh, cool. Okay. So and I can see. Are, so going back to that study. Um, so yeah. folks, this is what, this is the actual study right here. So now you can see with the roof line coming together, kind of why this study had to be uh, brought forward so that you get these offsets uh, because of the porch coming down here. So when you, when you, when you're going to go change a plan up with one of our design consultants, you know, these are some of the things that, that we have to consider and we may uh, consult you on. We may advise you say, Hey, look to do that. We're going to need to bring it out further. And, um, to make the house look right. Obviously, if this set back behind the porch, we'd have kind of a funky thing on here. We'd have a flat valley, which could be potentially a leak. So the changes that, that Darla and her team are making to these are, are actually happening. Even though we're doing it on a line drawing, they're doing it in 3D. Like you have to think three-dimensionally when you're making these changes. But you did a beautiful job on this home, Darla. This looks great. The way it Thank cascades you. down on this right side. Is yeah. Really cool. yeah, I love it. So it's... Uh the uh, they added the window underneath the porch on the study also to add some more light since we did increase the study quite a bit so just to get some more natural light in see that yeah. beautiful all right well let's see what else now here's the the rear porch changes that we made tell me a little bit about this they uh, do a lot of outdoor living it looks like like most of our customers yeah they do um, they they did the extended porch so it gave them that longer area um, of course, they grill out a lot and stuff, so they can kind of keep the grill down to one side, and then they have an area where they can actually eat, you know, under the deeper part right there. And so it just really gives them a good family space. Beautiful. It's really, you, know, you can see, you know, this picture's being taken from downhill quite a way, so I'll bet you, guys, you going off of that porch looking out is pretty spectacular. Yeah. So really tell us the, walk us through some of these... Um, now this house, so just it was probably spray foam, was it not? Or yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's why you're not seeing very many roof jacks at all. No. Um, in fact, very, very, very few. And there's no ridge vent, as you can see, whatsoever, folks. So those those go away when you're doing uh, spray foam insulation. You don't need that act that passive attic ventilation. Uh, this house has a dehumidifier on it and uh, fresh air intakes, all that kind of good stuff. So very neat. So tell us about the kitchen. What's going yeah. on in here? Yeah, isn't it nice? And they, did, they did the um, flooring in a, uh, a vinyl plank, a woodland vinyl plank. They okay. added the um, their cabinets. They went with a real deep, rich stain color. Um, and then their granite kind of pulls some color out of that. They um, just, uh, we kind of, like I said, we straightened up the curved, island that was in there to give them some more straight lines um and then just the you know kitchen dining area it's really you know didn't it, oh there we go <laughs> the, the, another view kind of from the living room back to the kitchen so it just shows how open it is and it's just very warm and inviting and uh, yeah you can look at the um so going back you know so looking from the kind of the, the fireplace wall back to the kitchen here Mm -hmm. uh, they have quite a bit of seating at this There's bar. There is a lot, yes. And just the amount of natural light that's that's pouring into the space is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, and then, so we did a cathedral ceiling. I'm going to the other picture now with the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Also about, about what's going on there. So did the, the stone fireplace, they added a gas fireplace. Um, and then they did the, we did a TV setup. So we could actually mount the TV above the fireplace, not have any cords hanging or anything. And then um, that allows them to actually have the equipment located somewhere else and uh, keep it real clean and crisp. <laughs> So beautiful. Yeah, into the uh, the second type master bath. So I think this is her favorite place in the house. I can um, see why. Yeah. <laughs> so we again we added the TV set up above the uh, soaking tub area, so she can run a hot bath and escape. Probably is coming in real handy right now because I know she's been homeschooling the kids and kind of staying at home, yeah. you know, during this time with the kids. So, but just a nice, uh, relaxing place. Yeah, a great place to just retreat at the end of a long day. They're working outside all day or yeah, in this case, working inside. Um, <laughs> I got two little ones at home right now. And yeah, uh, mama is, is full in the swing of uh, distance learning, which is fancy word for it's homeschool. Right. Uh, the, the teacher's doing a lot of the work and, and doing great work, but yeah, the mom, moms need a place to go relax right now. Yes. So this is yeah. beautiful. So you're saying the TV in the bathroom was her idea? It was. Wow. Yeah. Um, he agreed to it. <laughs> I bet he did. Yeah. Didn't, didn't offend him a whole lot either. Uh -huh. but yeah. So I guess it was really kind of a joint decision to, to go ahead with it, but she was uh, initially the one I think that brought that up. So nice, 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 nice. Um, very cool. And um, yeah, so let's look at the. Tell me about what's going on in the craft. So what do they use the space for? This is just a, really the kids' zone. Um, but you can see, they've got the game table. They've got the shelves with the baskets in them that have all kinds of different things. The kids are. Uh, you know, in the 12, 13 year old range. So they'll, they'll do a lot of craft things, but it also gives them extra space if they have guests. Um, so they just, I mean, it's a place just for the kids get out of mom and dad's hair and <laughs> have their own space. Yeah. So, but just a significant amount of space. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really large. Yeah. yeah. That is great. Um, so Don, do we have any, um, any questions that we need to answer? On uh, at this point in the in the show, we'd be glad to answer any questions. Yeah, we we do have a couple questions. Um, so Jessica Ann is asking if there is a bonus room on this plan. So the the canyon itself, yes, has a has a bonus room. I don't believe these customers did. No, no, no they, so didn't. They, they wanted the space all on one floor. Uh, yes. I think that was an important deal to them. Is that everything everything be on one floor? Uh, but the canyon, if you go to our website, uh, there is a bonus room option for it. Um, you cannot do the cathedral ceiling if you do the bonus option. I don't right. believe on this on this plan because I think it goes over the family room. Is that, is that right, Darla? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it looks like for this family, they're kind of using that craft room as what most people would use the bonus room for. So they right. they kind of figured out how to do that space all on one story. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's what we're seeing there. What other what other questions? Great question, Jessica. Thanks for asking. Um, Liz is asking if we know around how much these changes add to the base price. We've got an I kind of know. <laughs> I have. Uh, you have. I had Goldmine pulled up. Um, Darla, uh, if you want. Do you have it or no? I don't have it right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like they added. Um, d depending on. What you consider the the base price, and that includes the the custom option they chose or not. But it's you know the house completely done uh, was right at four hundred thousand, um, so three thousand square foot on one story with the garage with a three car garage with those porches all in was right at four hundred thousand dollars. So um, looks like they added you know probably about everything with the footage they added and and um, the garage size they did and the porch they added about about a hundred thousand dollars worth of just wow. everything in addition. Yeah. About 700 square feet of additional living area and everything. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome. 
And then Jeff is asking what those dimensions were on that back porch. So the back porch, it starts out, uh, Jeff, I know it's, uh, let's see, I'm verifying on that bonus. Yeah, the bonus room does, in fact, go over the uh, it does the family room. So uh, back porch is 19 feet by nine um, on the stock plan, if you like on the website. And I think they came over probably another uh, eight or 10 feet with that across that uh, the dining space. So uh, they probably had like a eight by eight space there behind the dining, something like that. And then uh, almost 20 feet by 10 behind the family room. So almost another room again where the family room is. Mm -hmm. What other kind of questions do we have? Is that about all we got there? That is actually all that we have right now. Brilliant. Um, Cause I think, yeah. So here now take us to the uh, uh, not, not so craft and hobby room. Correct. Not so craft and hobby, but this is the study, which actually, I uh, think he uses more workout. I think that probably the whole family ends up in there, you know, at some point. But yeah. he is, I mean, you see there is a little desk over there to one side. <laughs> I see he has some, he has, see these over here, uh, these things, these, these black and steel things he's got over yeah. here. Those are gold. Uh, <laughs> you can't get those right now. Those dumbbells. That's, yeah. Uh, you can sell those things on uh, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for high, high profit. Can't replace them, but those are highly, all, all workout equipment is highly sought after right now. Can't touch it. But yeah, I love that they that they were able to, you know, the unique way that you did the space where, yeah, it can be a study. It could be a multi-purpose room, which is really what they've turned it into. Um, and it can change as their kids grow, right? Yes. Like um, there's, there's no reason this couldn't be turned into... Um, a very, very functional space for multiple kids uh, for studying, doing homework, or even home office one day. Um, there's a lot that could be done with this space. This is great. I tell people all the time, it's, you know, the name of the room, whether it's a study, craft room, whatever, it's a label on square footage. And we can make that square footage, whatever it is they envision it being. It's just, I need a little guidance for what they're looking for. Yeah, that's a great point, uh, folks. Don't whatever you do, don't get caught up in what we've named a, a particular space. It, it it can be used for whatever. Um, the only time we'll probably stick to a name on a bedroom if it has if it really needs to have a closet for us to call it a bedroom. That really comes down to like an appraisal deal with a lender. But beyond that, I mean, the what we call the space, you can use it for whatever you want. Um, which is we really encourage you to do that. Make it make it your own. Use it for you and your family's uh, highest and best needs. What um, what other questions do we have, Don? Do we have any any other questions on this beautiful home? Yes, Andrea is asking what the standard height of the ceilings is, or does it vary by plan? Darla, would you like to answer that question? <laughs> the standard height on this plan throughout the majority of the rooms is going to be a nine foot ceiling. Um, most all of our plans are kind of going that way. We've got from 1,200 square foot up to over well over 2,000 that are on a nine foot plate. So that means basically the ceilings will be nine foot. Now there are some rooms like in the canyon, if you add the cathedral, the ceiling, you know, it can change. Uh, and then we have other options where you can step it or you slope the ceiling to put a higher ceiling in the center of the room. So. Yeah, so the she's right. Yeah, the canyon comes um, the base price. So if you look on the website uh, and go to see the canyon, you're gonna be like she said, nine foot ceilings everywhere, with the exception of the family room. The family room is a ten foot six inch ceiling on on the sea elevation of the canyon. What we're looking at here, and then yeah, if you do the cathedral ceiling, and there's really two cathedral ceiling options. There's a way to do it um, left to right, like where these folks did, and had the fireplace there in the middle, or you could do it onto that uh, the the back patio. Um, yeah. Kind of like what you've seen on maybe our driftwood or LaSalle and do like a cedar truss up there. Darla, you have anybody that does things like that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> In fact, just, uh, yeah, did one contract we wrote last week that we took one of our little smaller plan and did that option with it to, to cathedral through the family room out to the rear porch. But yeah, A Andrea, broadly speaking, uh, most of our plans are going to have nine foot ceilings pretty well everywhere. Very, very few of our plans have anything less than nine feet. Uh, maybe a room or two here and there if there's a, an upstairs or a, some kind of duct work or something going on. But most of them are going to be nine foot standard, then up to 10 foot six. And then, of course, like a, a cathedral, yeah, 14, 16, 18 feet tall. Great question. 
Any other questions that we have? Oh, we do. Um, not a question, but just Neil's letting you know that he's, he's planning to come visit when he's home from deployment. Well, we can't wait to have you home, Neil. We're looking forward to having you back here. And uh, yeah, we love building out by Granberry for sure. Oh, looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> what other questions do we have, Ms. Dantzler? Um, Jessica Ann is looking for some clarification on doing a cathedral ceiling in a bonus room. No, we can't do it on this floor plan. Can we do it on other floor plans for her? Yeah, the, the LaSalle you can do it on. The, um, oh, what's the Wimberley? I know you can do it on. I mean, there's there are several plans in our portfolio that we can do a cathedral ceiling and still have a bonus room. Any of them, uh, Jessica, where you're going to be having the bonus room over like a garage space, um, that's it's pretty well a great way to be able to still do a cathedral ceiling. But our Wimberley, our LaSalle, those are good examples. Um, the Driftwood, I think. Breckenridge. Breckenridge, yep. The model there in Weatherford. Funny you would know that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, there's there's several that we can still do that. Great. Um, Brooke wants to let Darla know she's coming out to see you soon. So okay. we're expecting Brooke. Great. I missed you a couple of weeks ago. I was off on PTO, so. Well, we'll allow that, I guess. It takes yeah. time long. Not too much, but yeah. Couple, Been here couple seven days. years. Oh. Have a day. <laughs> um, Jeff would like to know if we can do twelve foot ceilings through the entire living area, kitchen, and dining room. Darling, yeah, yeah, I believe so. I don't see that. Yeah, if you don't have, if, you, if there's no upstairs, there's nothing really preventing you from. Yeah, there's doing you you build up, correct, build up within the attic space and yep. add that. Yes. Okay, awesome. So Catherine is asking, you know, how do we decide um, on the base floor plan? Would you know, would we go by features in the house or layout of the rooms? Um, how would, how would we guide her to making a decision on that? Darla, what, I normally, what I normally tell people is I want you to find the plan that has kind of the layout that works best for you and your family. Is it split bedroom concept? Do you need the study? Are you just looking for a spare flex room? And then once we have the base layout right, we can do the other customizing to really put it and, and make the changes that you envision. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it, you know, it comes down to obviously a very personal preference, but we try to get, start with budget, of course, that's gonna be paramount. Um, and then what features are important to you? How many bedrooms you need? How many bathrooms you're gonna need? Who's gonna be using the space? How frequently? Um, and yeah, based on that, start with the base floor planning and go from there. Um, Christy is asking about the price to add a three-car garage. All right. So the typical is going to be like 22 by 33 or 22 by 34. You're probably talking a three-car, somewhere between 45 and, and 50,000, depending on where you're building the home, is going to get you pretty close. Would you say, Darla, is that going to be about right? I think that's about right. You know, what's on the exterior of the home? What type? finishes are you using? Is it all stone? Is it a mixture? Is it brick? I mean, those factors go into it as well. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. Is it stone brick? That's a great point. But yeah, you're looking you typically somewhere between uh, 14 and $16,000 per car on, on attached or really detached garages, same, at the same price. So. Okay. Um, Andrea is saying her she and her husband like the Preston plan and would like to do the cathedral ceiling across the kitchen into the living area. Is that something we can do on this plan? On the on the canyon or on the Preston? So I guess on the Preston is what they're asking. Um, yes. It, there's a little bit of an offset from the kitchen and dining wall versus the family room wall. Um, there could probably be some modifications made in taking in the rear covered porch and converting that to living to straighten that wall up to create the cathedral through there. Yeah. So, so Andrew, you have to either make the dining room smaller or make the kitchen breakfast room larger going onto that back porch to even it up with that family room. I can totally vouch for the Preston floor plan. Uh, <laughs> I built I built one um, many 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 years ago, so 
it's a great floor plan, a great place to raise a family. Love that floor plan. Okay, great. What other questions do we have? Um, Amy is asking about the usual height of the house, and she's talking roof height, not ceiling height. Great question. Um, there's no usual. Uh, it's they, they are going to vary, of course. You're, you're probably looking on these homes, you're talking nine foot plates. And I mean, somewhere between 20 and, and 24 feet is going to be typical. Um, I'd wonder why she's, she's asking that. It could be the, uh, a lot of, there are some subdivisions that actually do limit, right, Darla, the ridge, the ridge yes. height yes. of the home. Um, that's typically common if on uh, lake property or around, like lake view property where they don't want your home blocking the view of someone up the hill from, from you or from the lake going down. But um, most of ours are gonna be around, around 20, 20 foot. Um, by the time you get to the top of the ridge, 2022, 20, somewhere in there. Okay. But the, Brecon, you know, there are the bigger ones like your Brecon Ridges and your LaSalle's, those may go beyond you know, 26, 28 feet. All right. Um, Catherine is asking about a double door at the entry. Can we add that to the San Jacinto? Darla? Yes, <laughs> we can. We've made some modifications, but we can add a double door entry to the San Jacinto. Yep. Okay. And Amy clarified for us, she, she just likes really tall houses. I like tall houses. Oh, okay. So we can add the pitch. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's another thing you could do, actually. Darla, uh, mention what you're talking about there. So a lot of the plans, they're going to show what the pitch is, whether it's a 812, 612, and that's the slope of that roof. And so it, we can raise it as much as a 1012 or a 1212 to make increase the height of the roof line, that ridge line. Okay, awesome. And then Amy is also asking about windows and why they're installed lower and can we install them a little higher? Good question. So windows are installed lower because by code, um, egress, ingress, um, egress mainly for children. If you've got a small child, they need to get out of the house. They've got to be able to open a window. Um, and we put taller windows in for the most part anyway to bring the natural light in. Um, but some can be made a little higher. We just have to stay and make sure that we're working within the code. Yeah. So, uh, Don, if you could reduce us down, let me go back to this front elevation real quick, see if I can do a little explaining and maybe it'll, maybe it'll help. So okay. um, in this home, th these, these rooms here are bedrooms over on this right side. Um, and so that's why these windows are um, down where they are. And the only reason these others are down here over on the garage and the study on this left side of the home um, is because it was, uh, so, so these over here are bedrooms, right? And, and what Darla's saying is there's a limit as to how high off of the ground this a bedroom window is allowed to be. You have to have two means to exit a bedroom in the event of a fire. The door is one going back to the house, but also out of the house, out of the window. So you could raise that window up and a small child could climb out and, and get out of the house or adult. Um, and so in this particular case, these windows wouldn't have to be that low because this is garage and study. So why do we do that? Well, this customer wanted the front of the house to be uniform. Um, so we ended up matching the rest of the front of the home to match the bedroom ones. Now, if your bedroom's on the back of the house, doesn't really matter. You'll notice a lot of cases, our family room windows are a little higher off of the ground. Uh, you can go look at some of the interior pictures of like your, uh, the Frio, San Jacinto, uh, many of those. And you'll notice that they're in some cases, two feet or more off of the, off of the floor line. Um, so you put a, a couch up against them and, and still have the window starting right there at the, uh, the top of the couch. So hope that makes sense. Okay, I think so. Um, Chris is asking about French doors. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Darla, tell them about, because a lot of people have misconceptions sometimes that a, a French door automatically means it's double. T walk us through that. Tell me a little so, about what a French door actually is. Yeah, a French door is actually a single door with a solid glass window in it. There's one 
large fixed piece of glass that's double paned, <laughs> but that is a French door. So if a lot of our plans, um, the park or the Breckenridge, in fact, probably most of them have a, what we call a one light French door. That is a single door coming out of the breakfast onto the, the rear covered porch. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people choose to maybe remove a window or two from a family room if they're extending a rear covered porch and add double French doors. So you have two then side by side. Um, so under a covered porch area is the preferred location, <laughs> so, but they will open and then you have two, you can open it double wide. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Donna. Great question, Chris. Yeah. So you got a single French door or double French doors, but any kind of door that has a window in it is, is technically a French door. So double, single, whatever you want to do. Great. Um, Mel and John are asking, um, they like a couple of the plans that have the arched hallway openings and is asking if there's an option to have those just be the standard squared off. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't have to do arches if you don't want to, or if you see a plan that just has squared openings, you can arch those if you want. So, and we have different, a couple of different types of arches. We have kind of the, like an eyebrow arch with a full kind of Roman arch. And we have kind of a, what is it? The angled, up and down arch, so or square sheet rock opening, which is I think what uh, what Mel and John are asking about. So you bet. Okay, um, Amy has a follow up on roof pitch. Um, adding two to three feet in height inside the Preston plan is that making the pitch higher? Not necessarily. Um, no, 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 we it's going to make the ridge higher. So the overall top of where the where that top piece of lumber is will be two to three feet higher, whatever you say. But the the pitch itself, when we, we're referring to the pitch, we're talking about how steep or shallow a roof is. So the steeper the roof pitch, the higher up it's going to go. And then the shallower the roof pitch, the lower it's going to be. So um, that's, that's the pitch. So you could adjust both of those or either. But uh, just knowing that there's you know, a steep roof pitch is going to uh, cost a little more because you're actually adding the amount of shingles that have to be done. When you steepen that roof pitch, so if I take two things like this or this roof pitch and then I make that pitch higher, they get further away. I need more lumber and more, so I need more, I need more framing, I need more decking, I need more permafelt like we use, and I need more shingles to cover that up. So it's going to cost, and you're not, you're not necessarily getting anything, um, structurally out of that uh, but it is aesthetic so it has it comes down to a cosmetic decision right darla i mean you anything to add to that yeah no that's exactly it it just it's a personal opinion i've had some that don't want the higher pitch or you know and then those that i have added pitch to increase that and, and give it the aesthetics from the outside so that's sure. it is a personal decision Okay. Great question, Amy. Very specific. Here's another specific one. Um, Jessica is asking about um, whether we would be adding the folding sliding doors as an option, you know, the type that multiple ones slide in together and fold into each other. Darla, we ever done one of those before? Uh, we've had people ask about them. <laughs> we actually have done them. Um, we, have we, done we don't have them. it as a standard offering our portfolio. It but... is not, yeah, not something standard that I have. We have to get pricing for those uh, through job costing. So again, it's one of those things we look at what's the wall size and stuff, and then, you know, making sure we can do that and still meet our code requirements. Yeah. So we got, we got uh, obviously energy code we have to meet. That's the biggest one to consider um, when you're doing that, make sure you'll still meet the air changes per hour and all the current energy code. But, but the reality is we've done that on a number of homes. Um, and, and we use, an, uh, there's a couple of different manufacturers we've gotten it from. Uh, we've used Anderson, we've used Pella, we've used a couple of different ones uh, when putting those in, but our supplier has access to, to various types. Some that are, that it looks like the door you're talking about, but only two of them move all the way through where they fold back into the wall and where they fold out. And we've installed them every way. Um, they, are, they, they are expensive, um, but they're beautiful. They, they really bring, obviously you bring the whole outdoor space in um, but yeah, to be able to span that, uh, we have to do some pretty significant engineering in the, um, in the framing to make that happen, but it's, it's not something we haven't done before for sure. 
Okay, great. Um, along the same lines as doors, we have a question about windows. Um, can we get black framed windows? <laughs> you ever seen them done, Darla? I'm not, actually. Okay, so um, we can source them. It's not something that we have in our uh, uh, included. Like I think they come in three colors, the standard windows, right? the, the Crestmark windows, the 400 series, whatever, 475s. They come in three different colors. Black is black, or or some people refer to it as bronze. Is not one of them, but we can uh, source a bronze colored window. Okay. I don't. I don't have a price on it. Before you ask, I don't have a price. <laughs> it wouldn't where it's being built. But. All right, and then Sean is asking, uh, what would have been the cost to add just the craft room in the fourth bedroom? It's hard to say because I mean you really are talking about adding all six hundred at least six hundred square feet or so, right? So it, it I mean it, yeah, that's a tough one to answer, Sean, but you're probably talking close to fifty-seven to sixty-five thousand dollars, which is pretty close. Yeah. All right. Well that is all of our questions right now. All the questions, okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We're uh, we're super, super grateful that you joined us today. Thank you, Darla. You're welcome. time out of your day to do this. <laughs> some people coming to see you, so you need to start preparing. Um, uh, Neil and Brooke are going to come take a take a look at what's going on there. Don, thank you again for moderating this and answering all these questions and keeping us on track and putting you and your team, um, Kelsey and Nick, putting this whole thing together. So thank you all very much. And uh, we will be doing more of these. I know for sure we're doing another one next Tuesday uh, on another home, a very popular home. Um, so we're going to, we're not going to spoil it. No spoilers here, uh, but we are going to do another one. Looking forward to that. And thank you guys again for joining us. And we hope to soon one day make you part of the Tilson family. Thanks for joining us today. Bye everybody. Bye.